Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. A lot of folks still think that fine-tuning large models is difficult and expensive. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can fine-tune a stable diffusion model for literally $1. And we won't even write a line of code. We'll just use an off-the-shelf script from the diffusion library and advanced training techniques implemented in the PEFT library, which as we know by now is parameter efficient fine tuning. So this is pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's very efficient. Let's get to work. This video is based on a blog post that my colleagues wrote a little while ago, and I'll strongly encourage you to read it, of course. Uh, I will put all the links in the video description. So in a nutshell, what we're going to do here is we're going to start from a stable diffusion model we're going to fine tune it on an image data set of Pokemons, which is pretty funny. And we can do this very efficiently using uh, a technical LoRa, which stands for low rank adaptation. I will explain this in a minute. Um, in a nutshell, this technique helps us reduce the number of parameters that we actually have to fine tune. And that definitely uh, lowers the bar on how much infrastructure is required. Okay, so go on with this. Uh, this is the actual script I'm going to use. Very simple. And of course, we'll generate some Pokemons with the train model. And the model is also on the hub. So you'll be able to replicate this and, um, and with your own images, right? So that's pretty fun. So first things first, let's take a look at LoRa. Um, what it means in hopefully plain English and why it's an amazing technique to reduce the amount of infrastructure that's required. So as you'll know, traditional fine tuning updates all the model parameters. So when we're working with I don't know, billion or multi-billion parameter models, obviously this is a time consuming process and it becomes expensive quickly because we need lots of infrastructure and powerful GPUs with lots of RAM to even fit the model in memory, right? Um, and a while ago, this new technique came out. It's called LoRa, which means low rank adaptation. I will explain what the low rank uh, bit means. Uh, please go and check out the research paper if you'd like. And what LoRa says is we can fine tune models uh, and update models by simply training two small matrices and multiply those two matrices, add the result to the original model and have a fine tuned model, right? And obviously the point here is that instead of fine tuning the full original model, we're just gonna learn those update matrices, which are much smaller. So this is from the research paper um, and uh, looks scary, but hopefully I can translate this to plain English. So we start with an original model, so a weight matrix, which has two dimensions, D and K. And instead of learning uh, the total number of parameters, which means the product of D and K, we're only going to learn the two matrices, A and B, which we can multiply, right? And A and B are much smaller, so they have smaller rank, right? Which is the, I guess, the math term for size. And, um, and the product of those two matrices will be added to the original model, okay? So as you can see, we're still freezing the original weights, right? For, from uh, the W0 original matrix, and we're only learning A and B. Right, so only A and B contain trainable parameters. Which means that instead of tweaking all of W0's parameters, which again would be D multiplied by K, we only learn the parameters in A and B, which are uh, basically RD plus RK, or R multiplied by D plus K. So as you can see, we're turning, let's say, a, a, what's a a quadratic problem into a linear problem, right? Uh, because if we scale the size of W0, 
we don't have to learn uh, d multiplied by k, we have to learn d plus k multiplied by a small integer. Okay, so the scaling uh, is now linear instead of being quadratic. And that's the core interest of LoRa, right? We can work with bigger models, but we don't have to scale the amount of infrastructure uh, as much. So what this really means in practice is we can reduce the number of parameters by at least a thousand. Uh, so that means training only maybe 0.1% of the original parameters with negligible loss of accuracy. So that's a huge bonus because now we can train those large models on, um, on uh, potentially a mid-range GPU, right? Because we, we don't need as much GPU memory to fit the model. And at inference time, uh, we just collapse everything. So we load the original uh, model unchanged. We load the LoRa weights and we add them. Okay, so there's no latency. And in fact, you'll see in my model repository, we only store the, um, the LoRa weights, right? And when we load, that process is automatically implemented by the, the library. So no difficulty, no latency. Right, so this technique is implemented in uh, the PEFT library, and again, PEFT means parameter efficient fine tuning, and this is what uh, uh, the blog post here is using. Okay, hopefully that gives you a little bit of background. Again, if you want the hardcore math, please go check out the the LoRa paper. But again, the intuition is we don't touch the original model; we just learn a couple of matrices that are much smaller. Right, they have lower rank and we can just add that update to the original model and get uh, amazing results okay so let's take a look at the actual process i'm starting from the diffusive library which i i clone uh, to to this machine and if we go to examples text to image we'll see if we have different scripts to train um, diffusion models so there's the vanilla one and there's the LoRa one, okay? So feel free to go and, and read this. Um, it's not strictly necessary, but if you're curious about all the details, uh, you can certainly lo learn a lot of stuff here. Um, to keep it simple, I'm just reusing uh, the, uh, the script from the blog post. Uh, I don't think I tweaked anything. So we're going to fine tune this model, Stable Diffusion 1.5 on the Pokemon data set, uh, which you can see here. So it has 833 Pokemons with descriptions, right? That's a fun one. But again, uh, it, it would be reasonably easy to build your own data set with just images and, uh, and descriptions, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, we're going to save the model locally here. And once we're done, we're going to push the model on the hub uh, with this name. Okay, so we're launching the the training script with Accelerate. Um, the rest is really just uh, all standard parameters. Again, feel free to feel free to tweak. Right, um, you can change the validation prompt if you like. So uh, validation images are generated. Uh, regularly if you want to uh, keep an eye on the the training and process so here we are validating with uh, total images why not okay so that's that's the script so now all i need to do is really launch this okay which is simple so how do we how do we actually train this what kind of instance is this well this is a very small instance this is a G4DN X large AWS instance, and which is probably the smallest GPU instance you can get on AWS, right? If you don't know about G4 instances, go and check out the product page. Let's go and look at those things here. So yeah, you can see this is the smallest one. It's got one GPU. It's uh, as we saw here. It's a T4 GPU, okay. Uh, not definitely not one, not one of the biggest. 
with uh, just under 16 gigs of RAM available. And it's got 16 gigs of memory and on-demand price is 52 cents an hour. Okay, so definitely not expensive, especially when you compare that stuff to the bigger GPU families like P4, let alone P5, right? And that's, I think that's the whole point here. The whole point is obviously to train uh, in a, in a cost-effective way, but it's also to be able to train at all because availability of P4s and P5s is pretty challenging to say the least. Um, and thanks to that LoRa technique, uh, you can actually train your models, fine tune your models on much smaller GPU instances, which are very easy to grab, right? Whether you want to use G4 or G5, uh, which I'll show you in another video later. Um, this is just available everywhere. This is available in I believe all AWS regions. Uh, I keep meeting with customers who, you know, complain they can't get P4s, let alone P5s in their regions. Well, they certainly can do G4 and G5, right? So this solves a lot of problems from availability to to cost. Okay, so pretty cool. Um, I'm making a point to use the smallest one here, um, and obviously you could you could scale a little bit. You could try. Uh, G4 DN 12 XL, which has four GPUs, you would probably get some speed up there. Uh, of course, it's a bit more expensive. Uh, or you could go and try G5. But again, um, I wanted to show you, you could find you on this on the smallest GPU instance on AWS, right? So we just need to launch this. Uh, and why don't we do that, right? So that's my script. And we just have to launch it. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it will take a while. So we're not going to run to completion. Uh, I just want to show you that, first of all, the script works and uh, how long it should take. Right. <clears throat> so we can see at the bottom of the screen, this will take something like six hours. Okay. And maybe you're thinking, oh, wow, that's way too long. Yeah. Again, uh, the fact that this is running at all is just amazing, okay, on this tiny instance. Um, so you can just go and do this. You can scale up if, if you want. But again, you can run this on a tiny instance uh, for very little cost, right? So about six hours. Let's interrupt it because, of course, I've already done this. <clears throat> and some of you are thinking, wait, you said I could do this for one dollar. So six hours multiplied by 52 cents, that's probably three dollars. So how do I do this for one dollar? Well, you do this for one dollar by using spot instances. OK, and if it's the first time you hear about spot instances, you have been missing out. Spot instances are an amazing way to optimize cost. And so go and read about that. If we're looking at the price for G4 DN XL um, and in the, uh, in the US East One region, so we do see that the on-demand price is 52 cents. And we see that the spot price is, let's say, 15 cents. Right, and this is very consistent. That's a week, that's a month, and that's three months. Okay, so super, super stable. So, no worries, no problem. You will get G4DN XL at 16 or 15 cents an hour. Okay, multiply this by six. It only costs you a dollar, right? So I wasn't lying. <laughs> I never lie. Okay, so stable diffusion, one dollar. Um, so I pushed this to the hub, obviously, after after six hours. And you'll find the model here. Okay, there's everything. There's the checkpoints, uh, there's the uh, the tensor board logs if you're if you're interested. Uh, we have 
a few validation images, right? Which are pretty nice. I included the actual script just, just so you can run exactly the same thing I run, okay? You just need to clone the diffuser library and put this in the right place and run it. And I also included the full, uh, the full training log, right? So the actual output, um, just to show you that, yeah, you know, this is how it happened, right? It's not fascinating, but I know some of you want the full training log and uh, here it is. So why don't we try the model now? Okay, so I added a bit of information. So how do we, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so let's wait for a few seconds for the model to load. And let's see what kind of Pokemon we get here. All right, well, that's a pretty nice flying unicorn. So there you go. Now you can generate Pokemon all day long. So there you go. Fine tuning doesn't have to be complicated because we provide a ton of scripts and you saw a stable diffusion here, but uh, we have fine tuning scripts for, for everything. So please don't go and spend weeks writing fine tuning code. There's a good chance we have something that you can start from and tweak if you need to. And then when it comes to cost, uh, again, techniques like LoRa implemented in the PEF library are amazing. Um, you can actually run this demo on even smaller GPUs, but this is the smallest available on AWS and the cost is negligible. So you could fine tune tens, hundreds of models in parallel for negligible cost. You could also, of course, do this on SageMaker, just run that same code on SageMaker is, uh, it is no problem at all. Um, and so you can fine tune tons of models and, uh, and experiment at very low cost um, and, and scale on the cloud and build amazing stuff for, uh, again, very, very low cost. So go and experiment, go and run this model, go and uh, maybe add your own images to it. Um, see how easy it is to do it. Okay. Well, that's really what I wanted to show you today. Uh, there's more coming. Uh, I have a Llama to fine tuning video, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, working on this one in the next few days. Keep your, eyes, keep your eyes open for this. And until then, thank you for watching and keep rocking.